Hello everyone, welcome back to a... <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Sawyer Studios and today we are doing a little bit of a throwback. It's been a while since I've done a Who Would Win Wednesday and this is an Old Republic Who Would Win Wednesday, that's right. Everything Old Republic that Lego has ever come out with except for the Darth Revan poly bag because I don't have the Darth Revan poly bag and... It's, uh, it's more depressing as I think about it. But anyway, we are doing all of the sets of the Old Republic, and we're going to pin them against each other. If you guys don't know what Who Would Win Wednesdays are, these were my some of my very first ever LEGO videos that I made way back. Uh, actually, it wasn't really that long ago, just like several months ago. Um, if you want to look at some of them, there's an entire playlist. I'll have that probably linked at the end of the video in the description. Uh, but pretty much what I do is that it's sort of like a comparison video, but I pin the Lego sets against each other to see who would come out on top. So I'm acting as if these sets were like alive, like if they were in a battle, who would win? <laughs> it's pretty simple. So uh, let's play that intro. In case you don't know, uh, I do have a Discord server that you should all join and hop in where uh, I will be posting new uploads. You can see when those are. I will be posting streaming schedules, so when I'll have my next uh, live streams or hot streams or something like that. So you'll get to know ahead of time when I will be doing that. By the way, speaking of live streams, I'm having one. Uh, I guess by the time this video comes out, today at 1.30 Central Standard Time. So. Be on the lookout for that. Uh, you should definitely tune in. I'll be building the two Chinese New Year sets from this year. Uh, so, yeah, join the Discord server. There's also a nice little chat for subscribers that you can all, you know, just join in and uh, connect with the community and talk, I don't know why I just said community. Weird. <laughs> Everyone, so let's get into this. What sets? Do we have here in front of uh, in front of us? We have the Republic Striker Class Starfighter. This set was set number nine four nine seven. This was probably this was like one of my favorite sets that came out in this wave. In fact, I, it might be my favorite set that came out in this wave. We have set number nine five zero zero, the Sith Fury Class interceptor also a really cool one then we have the republic troopers versus sith troopers the battle pack that came out in this wave that's set number 75001 and then we of course have the jedi defender class cruiser which is set number 75025 uh just like uh i guess a description of these sets is that this one the jedi defender class cruiser has 927 pieces it retailed for 89.99 us dollars Came with four minifigures. Came with these four minifigures. We got a Sith Trooper in it. I'll show the minifigs closer uh, and a closer up um, when I get into the sets. We also got a Jedi Counselor, which I believe that's how you. I believe it's a Jedi Counselor. Uh, so a really cool minifig. You saw that a lot in the video game if you played the video game. Uh, unfortunately, this guy, I think he was just labeled Jedi Knight. I don't think they used his actual name. One of the things that I hate about this set, this minifig, is that they gave him a blue lightsaber, and he's based off of Satil Shan's master, who has a green lightsaber. So I don't know why he has a blue lightsaber, but he came with one, so it's whatever. And another gripe, we got a Sith Warrior. It's literally, I think it's literally just Sith Warrior on the on the box. Really cool printing and everything. It's just he doesn't have a cape. Like he has a hood. He doesn't. He doesn't come with a cape, and that really annoyed me. <laughs> that really annoyed me actually. Uh, so cool Sith Warrior doesn't come with a cape. Uh, the minifigs in the Striker class Starfighter. We had. Uh, we got Satil Shan which this was a huge draw to the set along with Jace Malcolm, uh, the Republic, com the, the commander of the old Republic army, which is a really cool minifigure as well. I'll do a close-up of him in a moment. 
<coughs> Satil Shan also came with her double bladed blue lightsaber. And just amazing, just absolutely great, just great detail, double sided face. Um, I'll get into her once again later. And also came with uh, this Old Republic droid that if you watch the Old Republic game trailers, he was also in. So we got this really cool looking Old Republic droid that came with the set. Even has a wheel on the back just like how it's supposed to be. And that was a really clever way to add that. So good job, Lego. Uh, the Battle Pack came with a Sith Trooper and then a like a higher up Sith Trooper. I can't remember. I think it was like a Sith trooper like a Sith captain or something I I don't quite remember what he technically is but he's like he has like these red decals instead of all black so he is distinctively different from that guy and then we got two regular old republic troopers the orange kind they were just really really well done this one came with a DC rifle this guy came with a really cool looking um brick built gun that you also could see. You could use this in the video game and you could also see it in the trailer. Um, and then I just did a review on the Sith Fury Class Inter, um, Interceptor, Infiltrator or whatever the heck it's called, Interceptor? Yeah, Interceptor. Um, so you can look into this set in more detail by watching that review. I'll have a, I'll put a card right there. So that's why I'm not gonna really go into this set much. I'm gonna be focusing on these three, because I haven't done reviews on these three yet. But if you want to see this review, I will go over it a little bit very briefly. But uh, overall, I'm just going to really skim it and not go into detail. So if you did watch the review, or if you have the set, you do know that this set comes with not one, but two Sith Troopers. So uh, some good amount of minifigs right there. And the set comes with probably the most coveted minifigure in this entire wave besides the Darth Revan. Actually, you know what? Maybe even alongside the Darth Revan minifigure because he's that, he's just, he's that good. And that is Darth Malgus. Uh, this minifigure is in fact like one of the most wanted minifigures in all of just, in all of the Old Republic waves. And he is the one who has inflated in price a lot, like a heck ton so much so very impressive darth malgus um from all the hype that you have gotten throughout the years and the prices that you have jumped so let's get into the close-up with the minifigures first up for our minifigs on the sith side is of course darth malgus i'll quickly go through him comes with a uh, red lightsaber also has a very nice half half black cape so sort of like a half-sized one comes with this very nice shoulder uh, molded like shoulder armor which is very cool and it has this very menacing face with those like sith eyes the wrinkles right there look very menacing the belt printing leg printing uh gray arms with black hands some nice torso printing along with uh some back printing as well if i can just lift up this cloak enough for you to see yeah uh not really much to see but yeah, this is this is the Sith minifigure. So he is going to be part of the Sith side on this. The next minifigure we are going to look at, and he is going to cover um, one, two, three other minifigures. So there's four of these Sith troopers in this battle. Two of them come the Sith infiltrator. One regular one comes in the battle pack. And another one comes in the cruiser. So. This is the Sith Trooper, comes with a regular DC blaster. And all of them come with the same blaster, so the same gun has some back printing, um, some lower back printing as well, black arms, black hands, some front torso printing. The helmet is very nice, has the Sith insignia, has very weird respiratory system right there in the front. Um, has the red stripe coming down the back as well if we take off the helmet you'll also be able to see that is the face that comes with it very normal standard face that lego has used before the next minifigure is going to be the republic trooper 
I chose this one to show off because the other one just has regular GC rifle. We all know what that looks like. But this one has a nice brick built uh, sort of like automatic gun. It's sort of like the equivalent of the chain gun in the Clone Wars, except it looks a lot cooler, honestly. It's made up of very simple pieces, but it one just still a really cool build, and I love that he can actually hold it with both hands the way it's built. Uh, nice orange decals along the legs here, the black belt, and then we have some nice back printing as well. Uh, more orange printing on the torso right there and on the helmet. So the helmet looks really nice. If we take off the helmet, this is the face that he has. And now we're going to go to the Sith Trooper Captain, I believe. He has some nice red decals on the torso, on the belt going to the legs. Gray arms, black hands, comes with a regular DC blaster. Some nice back printing as well and also comes with... Uh, a thicker red line decal right here than the regular Sith Troopers. I guess that shows rank. <laughs> thicker the red line, the higher the rank you are. The front ventilator is pretty the same as the other ones, I believe, and I believe he also has the same face. Yes, he does. So, not much to see here, but just a cooler, uh, way more red design. Next minifigure comes from the Republic Striker Class Starfighter. This is T70, or I think it's letter O1. It's T701, I believe. Um, as I said before, you could see him in the Old Republic trailer. He is a very bulkier, more bulkier droid type. Um, it makes sense that droids were bigger back then and they got smaller and smaller, like to the R2 units and then to the BB 8 units. Um, you know, even in Star Wars technology, continues to grow. Uh, you can see this nice little wheel in the back right here. Uh, and he is uh, very much brick built for a couple places. And these are all printed, I do believe. Uh, the dome pieces are pretty cool, actually. Two separate pieces. And yeah, it just he just looks like an old Republic droid. It's very, very well done by LEGO. I really like this minifigure. Next up is Grandmaster Satil Shan of the Old Republic. She has a double bladed lightsaber and look at all this. Very nice, uh, sort of like, what is it, coral green or I don't even know what type of green this is, decals. Um, but if we move the lightsaber out of the way, you can see like the gold lines in her belt, uh, the outline of the suit right here. And she even has like some braided hair right here on the torso right there. Uh, bare arms with gloves on. And then you have the back printing. I'll take off her hair, which will also reveal her double sided face. Yeah, more of an angry face. Uh, you can see once again, back like braid hair printing on the back torso, just as well designed as the front. And the hair piece is the same hair piece, which I mentioned before, as I believe Luna Lovegood in the Harry Potter minifig series. I just think it's, I just think hers is blonde. So that is very cool. Next up is Jace Malcolm. Such a cool minifigure. If you want to hear me talk about some of Jace Malcolm and Satil Sean, I did do a minifig Monday several months ago on them, so you can go check that out on my Minifig Monday playlist. But he also comes with a brick-built gun, which shot like like EMP bursts or whatever. They were, it was a powerful weapon. <laughs> uh, very nice figure. Uh, I was really bummed he didn't come with the helmet. I really wish he came with the helmet, but it has a nice double, nice face. The short black hair, if you look on the back, uh, there's nothing, unfortunately, that would have been a really nice minifigure to get a double sided face and back torso printing looks great. The red arms work well. Uh, let me take off his gun so you can see, uh, so you can see the nice torso, front torso detail because he comes with his knife that he keeps right here in his pouch. Very important to the Old Republic trailer if you've seen it. Um, and yeah, he also has some nice like printing and even some minimal belt printing right here with an actual belt printing above it on the torso. 
so once again very nice minifigure next up we've got the jedi counselor these types of counselors um in the old republic would go on very much like diplomatic embassy missions relations stuff like that very political um they would uh go off and do missions such as treaties and pretty much doing stuff that was strictly peaceful related and uh not at all warriors uh she is holding a double green lightsaber i love the slight gold and white printing this is very reminiscent to what we find the grand inquisitor wearing in rebels after we think he's dead and then kanan's in that temple and then he's you know the guardians the sentinels are wearing this white and gold designed um, outfit so this is very reminiscent of that very cool headdress very much like luminar and Dooley's, except white and we do get some nice back printing as well so yeah overall just a really awesome minifigure even a really nice uh really nice head printing as well next we have the so-called just jedi knight even though he is technically satil shan's master and should have a green lightsaber but once again very intricate printing these old republic minifigs lego did a really good job with them like very very well detailed throughout same species as eth koth I believe and uh, has a very cool looking face here is the back of him keeping with that nice look of this like olive forest green and this like oak brown works very well if only I had his green lightsaber that's my only complaint finally we have the Sith warrior with no cape yay uh, he does have some once again really intricate printing like Lego really outdid themselves with these minifigures they're excellent comes with these two black lightsabers with red blades and he does have back printing as well let me take off his hood uh, so you can see this really cool face that he has look at that chrome printing it just looks so menacing i just once again i wish he came with the cape but it's okay the hood works very well for this figure he just looks like a force to be reckoned with all right so let's review the republic class cruiser right here first of all this was at the time where flip our missiles were still within so on either side these turrets double as flip our missiles they also rotate 360 degrees uh you just push them out and out they go out they fly uh i never understood these flick fire missiles because once you shoot them out you know the ship kind of looks bad because they also double as the turrets so I, I i never used to shoot them out um that happens on both sides you have these nice blue lightsaber blades to indicate sort of like the the windows the front windows and such you have this small thing down here which i never really understood i don't think any lego youtuber really understood what this was for but uh most people said it was like a front boarding ramp where it comes down and that, I mean, that's really it. Like, you, there's no hole. You can't fit any figures up in there. Like, it, it's pointless, practically. So, I mean, it comes down. If you want to use it as a boarding ramp, I guess you can. You know, let your imagination go wild. Both of these sides open up, and they're held on by this clip. It's actually a really cool little uh, bridge area. Both are identical, just mirrored, so I'll only show you one. You have this very uh, oldish-style-looking control panel right here a sticker uh, and you do it does allow you to like see through the other side so there is space in here if you'd like to fit something or maybe even a character but if we were to take let's just say Jace Malcolm even though he doesn't come in the set but it's okay because he's old Republic we'll have to fit him in right here his legs fit in uh, with that and then he can just lounge back and type on those control panels right there so that's how that works a pretty okay cockpit scenario so let's just close these up right here in the middle this was also during this i came out during the yoda chronicles so the chronicles were a huge thing in lego so if we take out this container actually now that i'm thinking about it it might be the back one that has it um forgetting what's in this particular container oh no it is it is a jedi holocron these just came randomly in a lot 
of these sets in this wave, um, not just the Old Republic wave, but just in general, uh, we got these little uh, holocrons, which was just, uh, it was interesting uh, to see that. So put that back in the case. That's kind of concealed very nicely right here. Can't really see it. And you grab it from this Lego piece right here. You also have a secret compartment that can come off. Um, and this is technically a turret, I guess, that can that doesn't go up and down. It just turns 360 degrees. Not a really good turret. But inside, uh, you, I mean, you don't really have any space. I mean, you, I think you can fit like maybe one minifig in there sitting down. Um, you just have some empty cargo space. There's absolutely nothing, uh, like no detail in at all. Just like the inner workings. The ship does come with a very nice handle that comes up right here. That allows you to lift up the set very easily and, and have some really good playability with it. So that's an excellent addition. Along the side here, uh, we have some nice detailing, uh, even along the bottom. It looks very, very cool. Uh, then we have the satellite dish up top. Nothing much to it. And then we have this center, sort of like, I could try to put it. It's like a, yeah, it's a center. Center, um, I don't know, with lights. These are all stickers. This also comes off, uh, once again, nothing special in there, but you could technically fit a minifigure in if you want. I wasn't, I'm not quite sure why LEGO did this. It just had these random open spaces that you could potentially just put characters in and they didn't think anything about it. I was honestly a little bit annoyed by that, but it's, it's, it's okay. So we're gonna place this back on, there we go. Both of these detach and I bet you can guess what they are. They are escape pods. The tops of them do not stay on well. They fall off very easily. There's like nothing holding them on. It's really just gravity. So I'm, I'm not quite sure why Lego decided to go with this design. It seems a little faulty. And this is the escape pod. It's super simple. If it's one minifigure, it has a little sticker control panel right here. Yeah, absolutely like, I don't know. I, I don't understand why this is so easy to put on and take off. And that's where it sits. Literally the same thing for the other one. There is nothing different about them. Uh, they do have, you know, some translucent blue pieces around the outside to make it look cool. Underneath the ship, we do have landing gear that can fold up and in, if you'd like. So, yeah, all of that folds up. The back engines are pretty cool. Honestly, th this, like, engine design on the back here, it looks a little, uh, oh, just like these blue translucent pieces look a bit small for these huge, like, engines. I would have expected, like, just more blue, I guess, or more design. It just seems empty. Uh, but the outside, like these little things out here that gives the engine's character uh, nice designs in the back. Uh, the only feature back here is that you have the secret compartment that you can open up and it comes with yet another container. And I do believe, I mean, you can swap out these containers, this one with the front one as well. And I believe this one, you're supposed to put a Sith holocron in and hide it. Um, I guess like the Jedi have stolen the Sith holocron and you know they have put it back there in their secret compartment to keep it safe. Uh, so something along those lines so that can sit right back there and that flap comes down. And that is the uh, Jedi Counselor Cruiser. Um, you can fit a person in there, a person in there, technically a person in this compartment and the center compartment, and then one in each escape pod. So six people in our in all, six minifigs in all. The next Old Republic set that we are going to review is the Striker class fighter. Once again, oh my gosh, this is a great set. Printed pieces right here and right here looks very nice. I don't think there's a single sticker on this set, which made me really excited. I remember building this and seeing like these black spiderweb pieces for the engines. I thought that looked kind of cool and funny, but you know, 
The engines are kind of interesting. Like, there's not really any front to them. They just kind of stop with the bricks. Um, there aren't any guns in the front. There are these flaps that kind of go up and down. There's no landing gear. There is a cockpit that you can open up and you can place any person in there. You have the side control panels, the front control panel, a green translucent like edge piece and a, uh, a dusty um, handlebar right here for someone. In the back here, Satil, this is supposed to be Satil Sean's uh, fighter, so you're supposed to put her double blade lightsaber here. And the way you do that is that you actually have to take apart her double bladed uh, lightsaber. Um, so you make it so that it's one lightsaber like this. And then you put one of the blades in here, one of these hooks. Let's see if I can do this with one. There you go. You put one blade there. And then you put the hilt here, and then this folds down. It doesn't fold down all the way, but folds down. Uh, you can flick out two flick fire missiles on either side with the green cone shape. So you can do one of them, or you can do both of them at the same time. Uh, some really cool, yeah. This was around the era, once again, where flick fire missiles were leading away from the cones and going more towards these, like, translucent... Um, dome shaped pieces I guess so there's that this striker class is currently in the Locus foils position I guess you could call it a real cool feature about this fighter is that you can fold in the wings so these guns are mobile you can move them out here and then these wings unclip from the side and this allows you to move them in like that. So now if you just want to sort of like scout um, and not go into attack mode, you can fly it around like this. Now obviously the other way looks a lot cooler and as you can see, this is where the clips connect down here to keep it open. Um, the other way is much cooler, but this is sort of just like Let's just fly around and scout. And if we find someone, then you can open up the wings and start attacking. So a really cool playable feature that I appreciate. We went through the Sith Infiltrator in the past review. It does have a Locus Foils function on the top and bottom wings. Flick bar missiles on the side, just like the cruiser right here. A very open cockpit and a very crammed back. You're supposed to fit both Sith Troopers back here. And that you know that doesn't happen uh, this does come out it does detach the bottom so you can try to fit them outside of the ship um, but you know good luck it's just it's a hard it's a hard thing to do um, they it does come with two clips for the guns it's just such a small space to try to fit two minifigures especially the way the helmets are designed so we're just gonna slide this back in here and close this up and then finally, we have the very small uh, Republic Troopers versus Sith Troopers Battle Pack stickers right here. Comes with two flick bar missiles on either side. Some really small engines. Uh, a very simplified bottom. Just like a really small... This was like a super small build for a battle pack. So it came with some really awesome figures. And he comes with a small little pistol gun. Uh, so that is his weapon that goes on a clip on the side. He holds on to the handle and he just flies, flies around. All right, so let's quickly summarize what we have right here. We have Darth Malgus and Satil Sean. We have her master and we have a Sith warrior. We also have clone, com uh, well, sorry, not clone, <laughs> Old Republic, this is Old Republic. We have Old Republic commander Jace Malcolm. We have a Sith Trooper Captain or something. Uh, we have a Jedi Counselor, a uh, Old Republic Droid, two Old Republic Troopers, along with three standard Sith Troopers. Oh, sorry, four standard Sith Troopers. He's on a little, yeah, speeder thing. We have two Sith vehicles, two Republic vehicles, 
who would win? So let's look at this realistically with the minifigures first. Uh, so if you have watched the Old Republic trailer, I mean, technically it's not canon anymore, but Satil Sean defeats Darth Malgus in a duel. Now Darth, Darth Malgus comes back. Obviously he's wearing his respirator, so this is post fight with Satil Sean. So he's already, already fought with her. So he has more hatred, which probably makes him stronger because Sith. Um, he does defeat her master. Her master does die. Uh, Jedi counselors, I mean, you know, they can fight. It's just they specialize in peace. So I'm not quite sure how, I mean, like, I'm just saying Darth Malgus probably would be able to defeat this Jedi counselor pretty easily. Now, Jace Malcolm can go up against Sith warriors, so he could probably take this guy on. Sith, uh, Sith captain, the four of these guys, two of these guys, um, you know, this wasn't like a clone versus droid army, you know, you know, a clone can't outnumber a droid one to ten. So, Sith Troopers outnumber the Old Republic Troopers. That's just the fact of the matter. Now, the Sith do have two vehicles, but this one is extremely small and could be taken down probably with a couple of shots from Jason Malcolm's gun. So that really leaves the Sith Infiltrator and the Striker Classifier and the, and the Cruiser. Now, who's going to fly these ships? Well, let's see. Uh, I think probably your best bet is to have a Jedi fly this ship. So Satil Shan, I think, should probably be in the fighter. She could probably do most damage in here. And if her fighter gets shot down, she'd probably find some way to survive. And then she could be useful on the ground. So if we just place her in here, <laughs> if, I can, if I can just place it, there we go. Alright, so now Satil Sean is in here ready to kick some butt in her fighter. In the back of the uh, Sith Infiltrator box, it shows Satil Sean and Darth Malgus going after each other. So if you look at the back of the box, you have Darth Malgus flying it as Satil Sean is in the cockpit. So I think just naturally, we should probably put Darth Malgus in the cockpit. Hit. Now, one thing just that annoys me about this cape is that it just it's so hard. It's so hard to get him in here, get him sitting in a good spot. So now we've got the Sith Fury class interceptor coming after Satil Sean. They will have a dog fight. So they'll be fighting one on one. Now we also got a Republic cruiser in the orbit, which will probably be just flying around. I guess try. Okay, these two are gonna try to take on this. However, I have faith that the Sith could probably find a way to take this cruiser down. But that does give Darth Malgus two targets to look out for, especially if Shatil Sean is is uh is in the area. So I would say that um, he'd probably give one shot to Cruiser, he'd probably need a couple more shots to completely disable it. But I think if the Cruiser and Satil Sean work together, they could take down uh, Darth Malgus. Now, who's gonna fly the Cruiser? Um, from the looks of it, and from what I understand, I think a minimum of two people you will probably need. Now, could a droid do it? I'm going to say yes, because droids have done crazier stuff in the past. So, I'm going to put a droid in one of the seats. And in the other one, I'm going to put the Jedi Counselor, just because I feel like she's got the best use flying the ship, rather than fighting, because she is technically a peacekeeper by her role and status. So we have the droid and the Jedi Counselor in the ship, controlling it. It's just in orbit, which leaves Jace Malcolm, Jedi Master, who I don't remember his name, and two old Republic troopers to fight against four Sith troopers and this little thing, a Sith trooper captain and a Sith warrior. 
in this matchup right here, even though they these guys outnumber these guys, Jason Malcolm is OP, and um, if he can take down the Sith Warrior, uh, her master can take down a Sith Warrior, a no-name Sith Warrior. Um, yeah, and this vehicle flying around, this could totally be taken over easily by him or Jace Malcolm. These guys would just have to stay behind them as he deflects the blaster bolts as they snipe off the rest of the Sith Troopers. So if that's what's happening on the ground, unless they're given air support by Darth Malgus, but because Darth Malgus has two targets on him, he's probably going to have his hands tied trying to aim at Satil Shan and, you know, trying to, um, trying to, trying to get her down. So, at the end of the day, who has the upper hand? Who would win? This is such a close battle, this is definitely not clear cut. But if I had to choose who has the upper hand, if I had to root for someone, if I had to place money down, I would say the Old Republic does in fact have a just an ever so slight upper hand to this entire battle. I, I think the Old Republic has it in the bag, so... Sorry, Darth. Sorry, Darth Malgus. Sorry, Sif. I think the old Republic has got you beat in this Who Would Win Wednesday. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this Old Republic Who Would Win Wednesday. I know it's been a very long time since I've done one. I'm going to try to get back into them because I know that a lot of them, I mean, a lot of you all really like them. So uh, I'm going to try to make a little bit more and um, put them out on Wednesdays. Anyway, let me know if you agree with my decision on this. Uh, I do believe that the Republic would win against the Sith, but I might be wrong, you know? Let me know what you think and explain why. I'm going to be happy to hear what you have to say. Also, let me know what your favorite Old Republic set is, because it, it just from the just from the price and the minifigs alone, I think I have to go with the, with the Striker class. But a close second is definitely uh, this guy, <laughs> just because of also really solid minifigs in this one. So... Thank you everyone for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below. Click that bell icon so you don't miss when I am posting new content. Also, please check out, once again, my Discord server. Also, do not forget, today I am doing a live stream building the two Chinese New Year sets. Oh, which happen to be right here. I'll be doing this at 1.30 Central Standard Time. And it will be a hot stream, so I'll be eating, I'll be doing hot sauce, so. Stay tuned for this. Check out, come in, and ask me some questions and all of that jazz. All right, everyone, this is Sawyer Studios, and I'll see you all in the next video.